Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm taking you through our series on 2021's external exam in Queensland for general mathematics. And we're looking at our multiple choice and short response questions from paper one for earth geometry. So let's get straight into it with our first multiple choice question. And it's a question um, on time zones, but it also incorporates latitude and longitude. So a lot of students out there would have seen this and just groaned internally because this is not one that they typically are well brushed up on but we're going to get brushed up today. City A is located at 55 degrees north and 120 degrees east and City B is located at 40 degrees north 165 degrees east. The sun's going to rise in City A approximately and then we have some choices. Now I always think with questions like this it's better to work the answer out first because just inspecting it it's not one of those things without doing some calculations that you can rule anything out automatically. So you're actually going to have to do some calculations. The first thing you need to recognize is that when we're thinking about time zones, we're only interested in latitude and longitude. The Earth rotates on its axis and all of those longitudes roughly line up with time zones. So longitude is the only thing that's important. Now, if we look at our coordinates for city A and city B, we need to ignore the latitude. Now, this is the one that people often get confused about which one comes first. Latitude is always stated before longitude. And the easy way to remember that is LA is before LO in the alphabet. That's how I remember it. So you've noticed I've highlighted those in orange. So looking at that, that means 55 degrees north and 40 degrees north are not relevant at all. That's our latitudes. Ignore that. We want to find the difference between 165 and 120 degrees, which I've circled there for you. So our difference between those two longitudes is going to be 45 degrees. So that's our first step that we need to make. It still doesn't get us to our answer, but it's our first calculation. The next step we need to recall is that one hour that the Earth passes through on its rotation is equivalent to 15 degrees longitude. Now this is one that people often get confused. They might think, oh, it's 15 minutes for one degree. No, it's one hour for 15 degrees. The easy way to remember that is to just apply logic. The Earth spins through 360 degrees in 24 hours, which is one day. So if we're trying to find the rate um, of degrees per hour, 360 divided by 24 gives us 15 degrees per hour. So if we know that now, we've got 45 degrees. So that means we've actually passed through three hours because 45 divided by 15 is three. So we can straight away rule out options A and B. So now we're moving somewhere. We've now got a choice between C and D. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated for a lot of people. It actually was one that I had to think about a little bit deeply and spend a little bit of time on it. And the best way I could do that was to pull out a map of the world. We need to work out if city A is going to see the sunrise before or after city B. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. You need to remember and memorize some facts because you're probably not going to be given a map during the exam. Um, I'm a pretty visual person and I can actually visualize the globe. It all goes back to the days where I actually had a map on my desk and it was a, a, in, built into the desk when I was growing up through high school. And I used to study that map all the time as I pondered the places that I wanted to travel. So I've got a pretty good mental picture in my head of where everything in the world is. If you don't, it's actually a good idea just to study a map a little bit as part of what you're doing for Earth Geometry. Have a good idea where everything is. So if we look at the aqua line on that map, that represents the prime meridian. Okay, and then we've got this orange line that's kind of wonky in the middle. That's our international date line. So if we remember that time and, and dates start from the date line and as the world moves around, and so anything west of that date line will see the... Um, see the day first or see the sunrise first places like australia new zealand japan if we think of it though in terms of prime meridian where we count our longitude from the places that are the most east of that longitude line in down the prime meridian they will see the day first so it's a little bit tricky because we're thinking in terms of not only prime meridian but we're also thinking in terms of the international date line as well so Remember, longitude is in terms of the prime meridian because zero is where that is. And we look as far as we can go to the east, they are the people that will see the day first. Okay, so if we look um, at our particular map here at our two cities, well, we've got one that is further east, that is city B. It's going to see that sunrise before city 
A. So that means that we can actually rule out now, if we look at the things three hours before it rises in city B, or three hours after it rises in city B, well, it means that D is the only possible answer because D is the most east of the prime meridian. So that means that it will see the sun rise first and therefore city B won't. Another way to think about it is the sun rises in the east. So the first people, the people that are the most far east, they will see it first. That's a good way to think about it. Okay, so question 21. Similar sort of thing here, but this time we're given a map of some federal electorates in Victoria. And we're asked which federal electorate is the position 37 degrees and 10 minutes south. That's what that dash means, minutes. So it's a good idea to have your calculator handy for that one, but we can actually do it without a calculator. I'm gonna show you how in a moment. And then we've got um, the other position, 146 degrees, 30 um, minutes east. So that's our um, other coordinates for longitude. So first of all, let's start by finding our latitude. We're going to ignore the minutes for the moment and we're just going to work out using our ruler and by sight where 37 degrees is. That runs right through there with the orange line. Now we've got 10 minutes. 10 minutes, um, which is that fraction of the 37, is 10 is actually out of 60 minutes if we think of a clock. So it's one sixth of a degree when we think about it in terms of degrees. So that's telling us what fraction that is. You could actually use your calculator and spend time and plug it into the calculator. But if you understand how degrees and minutes work and you know straight away that 10 is 10 out of 60, which is one sixth. So you could actually simply drop that bar now down to about a sixth of the way down. You could even use a ruler to measure it more precisely with a grid. Okay, our next step is we need to look at our longitude and we're going to find 146 degrees 30 minutes east. So let's start by putting our ruler on 146 degrees there exactly and then we're going to move towards the 147 degrees. Remember 30 minutes out of 60 minutes is half of a degree. So that means we're going to move halfway across and that places our two points where we've um, measured our latitude and longitude right in the middle of the, well, not really in the middle, but down towards the bottom of the electorate of Indy. That awarded us our first mark. This is a six mark question, but this is part A. So part A is not worth a lot. One mark. Okay, which means we've got five marks left to go for this question. We now need to find the distance between point A in the electorate of Mallee and point B in the electorate of Gippsland along the same parallel of latitude. So we're told the latitude is the same. That's going to give us a clue straight away as to what formula we need to use. We'll come to that in a moment. So there's A and B. We've identified those on the map. So firstly, we've got to find the coordinates of each point. So we know that the same par parallel of latitude. Let's have a look and work that out first. So just looking at where they are on the map, point A is about um, 37.1.2 there's a little bit of flexibility on the marking guide as to where you did that you could actually do that more precisely if you rule the ruler use a ruler and work out the scale but it's approximately 37.1 degrees south and point a is about 141.7 degrees east so there was about a 0.3 allowance in the marking scheme for you to make a little margin of error so my answer today will be slightly different to the QCAA's answer um, as their first choice because they've probably used a ruler to measure the scale. I've used inspection. So I'm a little bit different to this, but still within the correct tolerance. Let's find the coordinates now of point B. We know that the latitude is the same and you may need to make sure you've got the same latitude for those. Um, so we don't need to measure that a second time, but we're going to measure where they are. They're about halfway across 148.5 degrees east. Okay, so now we've got the coordinates. And so you would have got a mark with the correct latitude, as I said, within about a 0.3 degree margin of error and correct longitude for both points as well we're awarded you the second mark. So that's three of our six marks we've accounted for now. Next, we need to find the difference in the longitudes because we know the latitude's the same there's going to be no difference there we're finding difference in longitudes now it's a simple subtraction we get 6.8 degrees and we got another mark for working that out okay two marks to go now we've got to select the right formula from our formula sheet and here's our formula sheet here on the screen now we know they're the same latitude now this is the one that people often get a little bit confused and like oh which of these formulas i've got a 50 50 chance i'll just guess one all you need to memorize is that same latitude 
means that you're going to be using the one with the trigonometry in it, cos theta. So um, you might come up with a way to actually memorize that. The way I do it, it's a little bit more complicated because I know that all of the longitude lines are all the same length. So if they've got the, they're on the same longitude, then there's going to be no variance in the way the formula is calculated. Whereas this cos theta adds an element of variance. And that's because every latitude line is a different length. And that's what the cos theta is actually doing. It's making an adjustment to the formula based on which line of latitude you're on because that will depend then on how big that small circle is. So that was a long way that I memorized it. You might have a different way. I'd love to hear in the comments how you work out which formula to use. Good idea to tell us. Okay, so we're gonna choose the second formula. That's our same latitude formula. Next, we're going to apply the formula with the information we're given. So we're gonna substitute in that difference as 6.8. A lot of people don't know where to put the 6.8, which was the difference in degrees. Do I put it at the end or is that the angle? Well, no, the angle is the same um, latitude that they had in common. That's the 37.1, that goes where theta is. So if we now substitute that in there, we get a mark for correctly substituting into the right rule. If we substitute into the wrong rule, no mark awarded. Okay, and if we substitute incorrectly into the right rule, so we've switched theta and 6.3 um, around, we get that wrong as well. Sorry, that's 6.8, I'm just half blind. Okay, let's apply the formula using our calculator. We get 603.1 kilometers, and we need to read that question carefully because we were asked to round to the nearest 100 kilometer, and that's our final mark, was rounding to approximately 600 kilometers. If you didn't read it and you didn't round correctly, you would not have been awarded that final mark either. Okay, we're on to our final question. It's another short answer question. This one's about time differences and time zones. And a lot of people don't like seeing the universal coordinated time. Um, they prefer GMT because textbooks tend to focus a lot more on GMT. You don't need to worry too much about what the difference is because if someone is GMT plus eight, they're also UTC plus eight. So we're gonna focus on that. We've got a conference attendee who's going to a conference in Singapore. We've given Singapore's coordinates. They're coming from Brisbane. There's Brisbane's coordinates and they're leaving at 10.30 a.m. Brisbane time on Monday the 7th of December. So the flight is gonna take seven hours and 40 minutes. When is the flight landing in Singapore? We need to give that in Singaporean time, day and date. Okay, so I think to this, the best thing to do is to quickly sketch a timeline. Now, some people don't need to do this, but I'm a visual person. I like visuals to see what's going on. So I can see Singapore at plus eight on the left. I like to think of it in terms of a number line where zero is the most towards the left. So we've got Singapore plus eight and then we've got Brisbane plus 10. I've even put on there what time the flight time. Um, leaves. So I can see straight away that Singapore time's behind Brisbane time. That's going to be important later on. The next thing I do is I pretend that I get on that plane and I leave my watch on Brisbane time and I don't change my watch at all. I just leave it there and then I let the journey fly out and then I look at my watch when I arrive what time is it still in Brisbane? That's what we're going to do. We do the adjustments to time zones as our final step. So let's work out what time that flight's going to arrive in Brisbane time. We've got seven hours and 40 minutes that we need to add on because we've been sitting on that plane for that long. So I start with 10.30 a.m. I'm going to break the seven hours and the 40 minutes up into two parts. Firstly, it's a lot easier for me maybe you too, to work with the hours first and then the minutes afterwards. And I often see students who try and do it all at once make mistakes. So I like to break it up. So let's just add those seven hours. 10.30 plus seven hours gives me 5.30 p.m. on the same day. And then I add the 40 minutes that takes me to 6.10 p.m. on the same day. And that was my first mark out of two marks. So that's now still on Brisbane time. Now I need to make the adjustment for the time zones. So my next step is that correction for the time difference. We already saw in our little time sketch that Singapore is two hours behind. So we take two hours away from that answer and we end up with 4, 10 p.m. Now notice I've underlined in the question day and date. If you just wrote 4, 10 p.m., not good enough. You also have to give the day and the date and that will give you the full second mark. Okay, let's look at part B. Someone else is coming to the same conference. They're coming from Dubai and they arrived at 5 p.m. Singapore time on Monday the 7th of December. If the flight from Dubai to Singapore took 8 hours and 25 minutes to determine the time, day and date in Dubai, 
when the flight departed. So once again, we're going to draw a little timeline just to get a bit of a mental picture of where everybody is in connection with one another. So Dubai is earlier than Singapore, okay? And we know when they arrive, we've got to work backwards to see when they left. Okay, so we're going to find that Dubai. We're going to keep our watch again in Singapore this time, Singapore time, and work backwards to work out we take the flight time off first and then we'll take the time difference off. Okay, so from 5 p.m. in Singapore time, if we take the eight hours off and the 25 minutes off, well, we start back at 9 a.m. and then we take the 25 minutes off 9 a.m. and that gets us to 8.35 a.m. the same day. Still Singapore time. Now we do our time difference and make our little adjustment there. We know that there's a four hour time difference because Singapore is four hours ahead. So now we need to take another four hours away, which means that flight left ouch at 4.35 a.m. on Monday, the 7th of December. And that was your final mark for this question. Well, I hope this was really helpful for you. And if it was, why don't you like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button, tell someone, a friend, share it on your social media pages, or even tell us in the comment what you found helpful. And you could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. McClutchy Mass is the place to look for there. So you'll always know when we have new videos available, tips, tricks, competitions, etc. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about what you saw today, my name's Natalie McClutchy. You can contact me on mass at yahoo.com.au or you could just direct message through Facebook and Messenger as well. We're pretty prompt with replies and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Have a wonderful day.